In today's video, guys, we're going to be going through the history of the Iapodes as a faction in RTR Imperium, Sorectum. This is taken from a longer interview I did with Jottle, one of the main historians for the mod team. So check that out in the description down below. And without further ado, guys, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the video. So on to the Iapodes. There we go. <laughs> the Iapodes. Uh, on to these guys next with their capital at Metalum. Um, these guys, so they don't have much coastal lands. So were they mainly, again, another inland tribe? Yeah, they're probably similar to the Del Mate in the way that they sort of migrated towards the coast, which is not unusual at the time. I mean, the RDI did it, um, the Del Mate did it, and the um, Yapodis are also doing it, they're in the process of doing it, and um, yeah, because that's where the trade is, that's where the, the rich cities are, and um, yeah, like like most of Northern Illyria, you might, may have noticed with the Dermate and the uh, Desitiates, um, the Northern Illyrians always tend to appear a bit later in our sources, because mm. um, Probably either they're not really that important yet at the start date, not important enough um, to the to all the war that is happening in the um, Mediterranean, like yeah. the, the successor wars and the Punic Wars, and so a, a few Illyrians beating each other up is probably not that important to the ancient writers. Um, so yeah, also so the uh, Yapodes, even though we can. Um, we know that they must have been there quite early. Um, yeah, they're already attested in the 9th and 8th century BC, uh, BC um, in in the general area, um, further inland. Um, we first hear about them um, in like a campaign in 129 BC. So like um, seven centuries later. <laughs> yeah after having already settled there. And um, yeah, so they're in conflict with the Liburnians. Um, they kind of take away their cities um, on the coast and um, are a general nuisance in the area. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, uh, cool. they're minor people. Um, and th these are the ones that, um, was it Augustus? No. Uh, sorry, not Augustus. So, sorry, that, yeah, way earlier than Augustus. Like, was that their campaign in 129? Whoever was fighting in uh, Macedon came back through the land and raided it, and they sent a petition to the to the Senate saying, like, "What are you doing? This is this is terrible. Why why are you raiding us? We we're not we're not Macedon." <laughs> yeah, um, it's in probably. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's in, in 171 BC um, 171. That, they, that they send a delegation to the Senate um, because of the uh, of a campaign of Cassius Longinus, yeah, um, who who marches through their land and um, he just le lets his army self supply by plundering, which um, armies often did um, yeah. when they were in in foreign lands. Sadly, um, so yeah, he he marched his armies through there um probably wanting to get to macedon and i think he he decided against it or he, um he didn't need it to be there anymore so he just went back and forth and just went went through their territory plundering um so they were already known to the romans by then definitely mm. um but um we don't really hear a lot um, of them before that, but um, when they have um, diplomatic contact to the Romans, it's it's pretty clear that um, that they were known to them and um, had like established relations and probably friendly relations when when they sent a delegation to to complain about uh, a commander stepping out of line. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, at least, like they were at least important enough for the Senate to hear them and not just turn them away, I guess. And uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, the the Senate kind of um, tried to keep their um, 
the commanders in line um, mm. because it's especially this time like around the 150s 40s 30s we see that um, Rome really expands but has expanded way beyond Italy um, uh, we um, the, the Romans already have most of Iberia at this point and a lot of yeah. Asia Minor um, have their foot in, in the politics of of the remaining um, successors and um, so yeah the, the Senate tries to not have the um, have the commanders do lots of bad things when they're in uh, friendly territory in, uh, in other territory, not just friendly, they just don't want um, any problems with like um, other other peoples because it could also always mean war and trouble. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, but I mean, they they later do um, fight several campaigns against the uh, Yapodes and um, eventually subdue them. I think also with Augustus. Um, yeah, Augustus. In, in the in 35 BC really um, conquers a lot of remaining Illyria um, which hadn't been conquered yet at this point and he conquers the Iapodes and Illyrians and Pannonians up to uh, Segestica yeah and then uh, obviously like Metalum and these cities became pretty rich didn't they under Roman Roman rule I think yeah um, I think um Metulum, um, yeah, they they continue into the Roman period, and uh, Metulum becomes a, a municipium, and um, so a lot of these of these cities kind of profit, or at least the the people. You have to say also that Rome settles a lot of people in these territories that yeah. are not native. So those are often the ones that um, that profit of um, the Roman trade in the area. And but yeah, the the uh, trading lanes kind of go through these cities um, from Segestica, from the major city uh, river cities, um, and the cities on the Adriatic coast. Um, there's a lot of trade flowing there, mm. and um, there's also the um, the Amber Road to the north um, in Germania that kind of leads down into Illyria. Um, so, trading wise, it is a rich region, but um, only basically also through the connectiveness of the Roman Empire, which kind of brings all these resources from A to B, but. Um, more to their own profit and sometimes to the detriment of the locals. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we can't really argue um, that they would have been too happy for a long time when, like, the entire province revolts. Mm. Um, yeah, thirty years later, but um, yeah, this is um, this is all deep into Roman times and uh, yeah. far away from our starting date. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of their uh, their units, then these guys are Delmato Pannonian as well, aren't they? I believe, yeah, Delmato Pannonian. Um, so, do they have any? Yeah, they've got Iapodian elite spearmen, and I believe they've got a sort of a unique horseman as well. Yeah, Iapodian uh, skirmisher cav, so another skirmisher cav unit too, uh, which yeah, is this cool. Is probably something that will get changed a bit so <laughs> yeah so um, so like the, the, sorry some of the northern was uh, sorry some of the northern rosters are still a bit work in progress um, especially cavalry wise but yeah the the Yapodus spearmen that you just uh, showed the um, elite spearmen and the uh, swordsmen i think they have a swordsman in in the in the roster um in the city i think oh uh, yes they get it after uh Controlling After three, yeah, three Celtic settlements. Yeah, um, it's probably also a bit of a stereotype of the sources, but um, it is said that they that their equipment is Celtic, basically. Oh, cool. Um, but they are that they are culturally still Illyrian, which which is funny because scholarship doesn't 
really consider the um, Neapolis to be Illyrians. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Strabo says um, they have tattoos like the rest of the Illyrians, but their armor is um, Celtic. So oh, okay. we gave them these two elite units with mail and um, yeah, Oreo's shields and um, the helmets that were kind of in at the time in this area. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, well, I think uh, we can then move on to the Laburni. Probably my favorite faction in terms of what I've seen of them so far. Well, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.